This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we are back. Baby, what's up, bro? You look relaxed. You, I, I can't tell either. This mood that I'm seeing with you, it's either angry and defeated or relaxed. It can go either way. Where are we at? How you doing? Sebastian Mana Scalco. One of the uh, biggest yeah. comedians on the planet, bro, before the pandemic and after it lifts. What's up? I want to get into I want to get into that a little later on. Uh not necessarily um I just want to get into where comedy's going after this pandemic, but I got I got to tell you this right off the bat. I had a situation last night. What's up? Similar to what you have dealt with in the past and I and I got to get your take on it. All right. Uh <clears throat> I'm going to take you back what's uh, today. It's Sunday night. I heard a uh 2:30 in the morning. I heard a little beeping right about every minute uh so i got up and i was like oh where the hell is that coming from I, i'm walking around i'm thinking it's a fire alarm low battery right. something like that yeah but it stopped so i couldn't locate it last night Went to bed early. Nine. Oh, right? pandemic is beating you down. I've been there. I did it. I did a nine thirty on Sunday. Like, there's no reason to fucking stay up. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but go ahead. down at nine. All right. Down at nine last night, and Lana wakes me up. Unheard of. Because normally I'm the light sleeper, but I I go deep uh, sleep early. Uh, according to my uh, aura ring, I don't have it on, but the ring, the sleep ring tells me I go deep, I go deep early on into the sleep, right? What, is, what does a ring do? Well, should we put that aside note? Aura ring, I don't want to slow your momentum. <laughs> aura <laughs> ring monitors my sleep. It tells me my heart rate during the evening. It tells me my uh, REM sleep, my deep sleep, my efficiency. Um, what? Uh, what is this? Like an electronic ring or something? I thought you meant like it's a ring that changes colors with your mood that you get on vacation. No, places. no. This is monitoring not only my sleep, but uh, how many calories I burn per day. The whole thing. Oh, wow. So, so it tells you when you're getting your best sleep? Yeah, and, like I've no I've noticed when I drink at night, yeah, my sleep isn't as good as when I don't drink at night. Right. I notice that my sleep is a lot deeper when I um uh when I don't go on the cell phone two hours before I go to sleep. Wow, I know studies show that stuff and it's true, huh? All right, what else? What's the other one you're about to say? Uh, what else does it say? Uh, it tells me from when I hit the pillow to when I start to go to sleep, like what the efficiency rate is. Like as soon as you start to go to sleep, it says, by the since you got into bed and since you went to sleep, it's been 17 minutes. Is that what you're right. averaging about? What do you average? No, no, I'm just giving you an example. Well, I'm wondering, like, I, I feel like I hit the bed and I'm out like a light within Solid 10. Solid 10 usually. Well, the no way it normally works with my sleep is like I rarely go to sleep and go, I'm, I think we talked about this in a previous cast. Like when I go to sleep, it's not like I, I work construction for 16 hours and then I just lay down and I'm done. Right? Right. Yeah. My sleep more is like, all right, let's go to bed and then maybe we fiddle around with the TV a little bit. And then uh, I take this CBD oil, by the way, Papa Barkley, which is one of the best CBD oils I, I've known right. to, 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 to knock me out. So that takes about 15, 20 minutes to set in. And then I start to get the heavy eyelids. They start to roll in the back of my head and I'm done. All right. All right. All right. Now, so, yeah. So last night, 1030. Now, mind you, we went to sleep at 9, 10, 30. I get a nudge from Lana. What's that? Beeping. And I'm like, uh. Now, I'm hearing the beeping, and it's like, beep. And then maybe another 15 seconds, beep. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I go, and it's coming out of Caruso's room. 
Now I look up in the ceiling, right? I got two which to the naked eye would tell you they are smoke alarm detectors. Okay. But the Pete in me kicks in, right? All right. I go, is one is a carbon monoxide? There you go, guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. By so, the way, this is Caruso giving you a look like fucking A. Thought you were never going to come. I was about to go crazy over here. Kids sleeping like a bear. Wow. Nice. Nice. He don't, even need, he don't even need no ring. <laughs> he just hits the pillow. He's out. I love no stress. Kids got no stress. They, all they need to know is when their birthday is and when Christmas is. Other than that, <laughs> don't shit yourself. Have a good night. What the fuck? All right. So he's sleeping, but it's one of those kind of beeps where if this goes on uh, any longer, it's going to be a problem uh, yeah. for him. He might wake up, and now yeah. we're up for the night. God yeah. knows if this kid's going to go back to bed. So uh, It needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed. But I'm freaking out because I'm thinking this is carbon monoxide, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, as you well know from your story a few months back, carbon monoxide is odorless. It's only detected by this machine. It's not like you could sniff it out. So I'm thinking, my God, if this kid's sleeping and there's a monoxide in the room... Are we going to have to take the crib and move it out of the room with him in it? You know, like, seal the room, seal the room. Absolutely. Wait. But <laughs> I'm, I'm scenarioing this whole thing out, right? I'm like, if he's in at right. this, do we do this? Right. this? You're being the dad. You're being the man of the house. You're processing like a machine, baby. Right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, w women just want to go take the batteries out. Let's go back to bed. Oh God, here we go. We're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I go back to the room. You know, yeah. normally the wife. I I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm playing my cards wrong here. Yeah. Maybe the wife is up, kind of sitting up in bed. Maybe put the light on just a little bit, not bright, but just a little, waiting for a report. I would yeah. I, absolutely. Are we? Are we? What was the alarm about? Do we have to make a, a move here, or are we okay, honey? Snoring. Absolutely unbelievable. They all do it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> now, is that because they have such confidence in you, or is it because they don't care? Like if they yeah, were living, if they were living alone, would they just sleep right through that shit? <laughs> if I were my wife. Yeah. I would have no confidence in me. All right? Right. Yeah, well, but you're such a worry wart. And if you're not coming in, we're waking her up going, we got to evacuate, then it's got to be nothing. You know what I'm saying? Let's see it. Let's see how the one who freaks out the most feels about it first, meaning you. And then it'll determine if I got to get up. <laughs> in these scenarios, though, and I don't know how you play it, I need another ear. Right? I need another person to kind of bounce stuff off of. You right. know what I'm saying? No, because if everybody dies and you're in heaven, you want to be like, that's why I was waking you up. I wasn't sure. Right? I don't want to be responsible if the house burns down and we're all on the front lawn and Jackie's going, guy, you fucking heard a beep and you went back to bed? What are you, a fucking idiot? You know? <laughs> so I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I need someone else to take the part of the responsibility, <laughs> however this is going to play out. <laughs> Bro, I don't want to wake up and the whole house is dead. Right? <laughs> right. Or else the flames are licking your wife's ass and you go, baby, I miscalculated. We got to jump out the window. Don't worry. I already threw the kids out. They're in the pool. <laughs> oh, God. So she's out cold. I go, look. And I, into my head, I go, look at this shit. Could, get, could care less. Right? Could care less. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know if you pull this move. You ever make a, a noise like you're back in the room? Like normally I'm like a mouse. Like I, I slip in the bed. I just I just like like levitate right back in the bed. Uh, yeah. And you don't even know I came back. But this time I'm like, you know what? Let me let me uh 
<laughs> Let me make some noise. <laughs> let, let her know I'm back, you know? I hear you. I hear you. Do a little aggressive fall into the bed, right? <laughs> no, I didn't even do the fall. What I did is I opened up a drawer and I rattled it a little bit and gave it a little rattle, you know? Uh, why, why, why you open up a drawer? Or was there any reason for that? I open up the drawer to get a flashlight, but normally I open up the drawer and nothing, like like a like a burglar, right? Yeah, right. Very considerate. <laughs> yeah, but this time I gave it a little jiggle, and she's like, "Ah, oh, oh. she like, what, what was it?" I go, oh, "I'm going to investigate." <sighs> now my plan is to go up top with a ladder. Now, this is very hard to do when a kid is sleeping. Right. To get on a ladder and go with a flashlight up into the ceiling to see if it says fire alarm, carbon monoxide. I'm trying to get any indicators from the outer portion of the alarm what the hell this thing is. So I get the ladder in there. I go up. It doesn't say nothing. Right. It just says fire alert. Uh, and that's the name of the company, right? Right. right. How so high up like, are we talking on this ladder? Ah, it's a it's a four step ladder. I'm on the third ring. What right? time? What time are we talking? What time? Ten thirty, early in the night. I would have been up at this hour if I was uh, a man, right? right? <laughs> but you went to bed at nine. Your ring is actually blinking, going, "Guy, what the fuck? We were in the deep. We were in the deep." <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, it's it's this is crazy, right? Ten, five minutes ago, you sound asleep. Five minutes ago, and now you're on a ladder with a flashlight. Boom, man time, man time. There's a there's a question for you. Yeah, if you're doing ladder work out of a sleep, are you getting into some shorts and a t-shirt, or are you staying in the underwear doing this? What's your take on that? Oh, I'm doing it in what I'm 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 doing it in my bed outfit. I'm doing it in my bed outfit. Even just to do a side note, last night <clears throat> last night we had a huge thunderstorm in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, fucking lightning, and I woke me up. And then I thought I might have left Jackie's the, the the windows open in the Tahoe. And uh you ever do this? Like if I lived alone and it was just my car. I, I would have went back to bed, but I only got up because I didn't want to hear her yell at me the next morning. So totally in my underwear with the flat, with the umbrella. <laughs> and when I came back to bed, I still had raindrops on my back that I just, I rolled into the sheet. I rolled my blades into the sheet of my bed to get the raindrops off. Man time right there. Right? So now you're two steps up out of a dead sleep. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> so Fucking wait, wait, wait. Did you, you go barefoot out in the driveway or do you put some like shoes on for that? No, as you know from uh, season two, I always got a pair. I always uh, got a pair of Walmart slippers right by the side there that I slide in and slide out. So I, I was in my Walmart. <laughs> Walmart slippers, a pair of underwear, and an umbrella that was doing dick. <laughs> it was not working. And the windows are up, by the way, so there you go with that shit. Fucking waste of my time. <laughs> now, if let's say you were up uh, in your living room watching TV, and outside you saw a guy, your neighbor, come out like that, would you go, oh, look at this ass? Like, would you <laughs> sympathize with the dress code? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You could come out buck naked between three and five. Buck naked between three and five. If you're only out for a minute or under, totally acceptable. Like, come on. If you slept naked and you're like, ah, I'm up early. I want to read the paper in bed. I would do a quick half jog out at 3.30 in the morning to, to get the paper buck naked. If I'm already a buck naked guy, right? That's, so. No, but here's the deal. To your point. I get back into bed. I start shaking the roll of the bl shoulder blades to get the rainwater off my back. And Jackie rolls over and gives me a look like I'm moving. Moving? I was already fucking out in this monsoon checking vehicles. <laughs> you think I just rolled over? Holy <laughs> shit. They don't even know the shit we do in this sleeping guy. Protecting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I know. I'm in my, I'm in my underwear, no slippers even, barefoot on a ladder that I got out of the garage. Just, just opening a ladder.
I, I, in and of itself, out of a dead sleep is a big deal. <laughs> to, to carry it out of the garage, holy shit. I mean, what am I up? I may as well make a fucking sandwich. This is insanity. I'm right there with you. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Not even the kid whose room I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh god and, and as i'm doing this i go oh my god i mean like i love to pat myself on the back lana will tell you because yeah. nobody does <laughs> yeah and i'm saying you ever you ever sitting there and like while you're outside rolling up the window going what husband does this uh, right not many <laughs> not many slugs they sleep through you know why 90% of them got sleep apnea machines. They'd have to unplug that shit. Just to, they don't even hear a noise. All they hear is... <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. That was rude. No, it's uh, great. It's funny. Uh, it? But no, I mean, uh, I hear you know, man. How many men? How many men get up and do that? Unbelievable. You put the ladder away when you're done, or you just leave everything out till the morning? Well, listen, I, listen to me, bro. This, this night's just starting for me. Oh, my God. All right? Yeah. So... I, uh, I, I, I get the, uh, I get the fire alerts, the name of the company. I go back to bed and I get on my phone again, sleeping, right? No, nothing. So I start looking up fire alert, carbon monoxide, uh, machines. And I start looking at the model numbers and I'm trying to figure out. Is this a fire detector or a carbon monoxide detector? I can't really determine it from the website because I'm thinking this is a model from 2007, 2008 when they redid the house. Right. So now right. I got to, and, and I got to tell you, the internet's an amazing thing. I don't know how our parents did it yeah. without the internet, but wouldn't you know it, I type into YouTube, fire alert, carbon monoxide beeps because I wanted to know what the beeping meant. I wanted to know if it's a low battery or get the hell out of the house. People are passing away. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Once you know it, there's some guy in his kitchen from 2011 doing a tutorial on what the beeps mean. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Again, very weird, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I don't know where this guy said in his day was going to go, oh, yeah, I got to do the beep video for YouTube. Yeah, right. But, but here, before you go on, but you're really appreciative that this is there, right? Now, let's say that you discover... Oh, there's a half beep that he don't realize that could save a lot of people a lot of time. It's just a little thing I should tell them about that I figured out. Are you going to add that? Like put up a video going, uh, hey, guys, just want to tell you there's also a half beep. Or you're just going to go, ah, fuck them. Let them discover the half beep at, the, at their own kitchen table at uh, six, uh, three in the morning. At this point, I'm happy the guy did the video, but I'm also upset that he's got this much time to do the video. And Thank the God for this guy. <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Yeah. They make the beep of carbon monoxide very similar to the low battery beep. Now, I don't know why they do this. Yeah. If it's a carbon monoxide issue, I want to hear... Absolutely. Right. right. And Just, then. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm right there with you, man. Scary. Something scary. Something that, you know, like, you know, before you even saw Jaws, you heard that piano and you're like, this is not going to be good. Just something very yeah. distinguishable. Yeah. But the. But the other beep is the low battery beep. Basically, what they're saying is one beep every every uh, thirty seconds is low battery. Three beeps is carbon monoxide. It's too. It's too. It could be misconstrued very easily. All right, because the three beeps, which maybe I thought I was hearing, because I don't know, I was in a sleep and I didn't was wasn't counting the beeps. It it it, it went off. So. I'm thinking, okay, did some carbon monoxide go up, hit the machine for a little bit, 
and then there was not enough and it kind of dissipated and now there's no carbon monoxide or do they tell you you know we're gonna make we're gonna beep the machine for three minutes hopefully you hear it and then <laughs> We we ain't telling you anymore. That, that's it. We don't want to wake up the whole house. You know what I'm saying? It's a three beef thing, and uh, that, that's it. No, right? I know all this is going through your head. You don't want to have the next day going. Yeah, it turns out it was a really slow leak. Like, did you hit three beefs and then not hit something like a half hour, and then you heard it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tragic. That was yeah. That's what it was. So yeah. So I'm now one shouldn't even be a beep, right? Like, low batteries of beep, carbon monoxide is a horn. Like, that's it. Yeah. That's it. They should be two different sound indicators in the alarm. There should be a horn. And I would even go a step further, put some audio in there going, get out of house. Get out of house. How right? hard is that to add? I love it. It's beautiful. Oh. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. <laughs> so, so I'm doing recon on the phone in bed, wife's out cold. Okay. Yeah. Now I I go, babe, I, I need your help here. She goes, Wow, what, what is it? you know, like and, and you know, like what also bothers me is the is the way she gets out of the slumber, you know, like you know, it it, it would be equivalent to how when you were a kid in high school and your parents came in to wake you up to go to school. You yeah, know, like, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, two more minutes. That's what I'm getting on a monoxide possible uh, alert from my wife. And I go, listen, I... I don't know if this is the carbon monoxide. I don't know what this thing is. I'm thinking of calling the fire department. Now, before I even had that thought, I'm thinking about how am I, who's going to come to the house for a carbon monoxide thing? Because you said the whole truck came for you, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no, you don't call up and like place an order, you know, like. I don't need a large pie, just a few slices. Like, you don't go, no, just send just send one guy in, like, his own car. Don't make a big deal out of it. If there's one guy already awake in the firehouse, like, just have that guy come down. Let's say we don't need a whole parade here. That's, that's what I'm saying. I wanted an option because I didn't want to get up, like, seven guys out of a sleep to come check it out. I wanted a guy to come in that auxiliary vehicle. You, you ever see those? Uh, it's like a van fire truck. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it, it's it's not the fire truck with the ladder. It's like a it's like a Bronco that yeah. says fire department on it. Absolutely. It's usually it usually comes about 2 minutes after the fire truck with just the lights on, no noise. You're like, "Oh, here comes that guy," right? I hear you. Just send him. No noise, just the lights. That's it. So I'm, I'm scenarioing out the whole thing of like, okay, now I got to get some pants on and a t-shirt and, and I got to put some actual sneakers on to meet these guys in the driveway yeah. because number one, I, I'm sorry, you can't greet firemen in a robe or, or what you go to sleep in, like no. shorts and no. slippers. No. No. You no. have to, you have to basically come out there ready just in case they go, listen, could you hold the ladder? Like you, I think you got to be ready to work when oh, you, when <laughs> See, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Just, they may hand you a red shirt. Go, we need you to loosen up the hydrant. You don't want to be in your fucking <laughs> underwear going, oh God, hold on. Let me go get a pair of shorts on. <laughs> right? The only way they see you when you sleep wear is if you had to jump out of the window into one of them big blankets with ten of them holding it. And even then, I might just say, fuck it, I'm burning. <laughs> <laughs> These guys ain't seeing me in my camouflage fucking tidy whities right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> even if I had to jump in one of those things, I think I would get some pants on. And they would... They would go, what took you so long? I said, I had to go back in through the smoke to get my Nike sweatpants. You get third degree burns on your back of your calves just because you didn't want them to see you when you're underwear. I love it, bro. I'd be like, close your eyes. Hold the sheep and close your eyes. Oh, shit. I hear Oh, you. my God. 
Oh, so, so now, you, now you're torn. Do I call? Do I not call? Oh, bro, is it still beeping? No, it's not beeping anymore, but that's even scarier because I'm thinking, oh, my God. Did, did, did that, was that the indicator to get out? And, see, and I ain't listening to it, yep. you yeah. know? Yeah. So Lana throws me this one. Do you have a uh, uh, a mobile CO detector? No. Nah. I don't even know what the what the CO detector looks like yeah. in my own house. And she's asking me if I got a mobile one that I go around holding the thing up to see I got CO. I got, I got no <laughs> fucking mobile one. When did you ever see an Amazon shipment come and it was a mobile CO detector? <laughs> we got the detectors and that's it. That's, that's it. it. So I do a, I do another one. It, hold on, let me let me put the uh, the air conditioning right. on here. Right. So uh, I do another one. I get my mind thinking. I go, you know what? Let me go check. Let me go check Serafina's room to see if she's got the same setup. All right. All right. And let me go in the in the guest room to see if they got the same setup. Go in the guest room and I'm looking and I go, okay, yeah, they got the two up there. And then I take a look to my right. There's a carbon monoxide detector. It says carbon monoxide on the machine hooked to the wall. And I go, wow. Go back downstairs. Look in Serafina's room. She's got the same carbon monoxide thing on her wall. Going Caruso's, he's got it too. Right? Right. And I look, it's it's green, and green means good. Everything's good. I know. You did it. You did it. I have a little peace of mind, right? Right. But that's still in the back of my head. I go, <laughs> This is a sick no, guy. Yeah, this is, yeah. No, I, no, if, if I was your male lover, I, I would fucking go sleep on the couch at this point. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed. What now, hon? What the fuck? I'm thinking, did they put a newer model carbon monoxide detector up there? Because this one on the wall might not be sufficient enough, you know? I don't know. Right. I, this is not my house. I mean, I didn't build it, so I don't know the mindset behind right. what they were thinking with the carbon monoxide. So I come back. She's she's like, "What's the pro what's the problem now?" I go, "There's a carbon monoxide in there that says everything's okay, but I still don't know what the hell is up top. I don't know if that's a fire. I don't know what that is." I said, "I feel pretty good about going to sleep. Ninety nine point nine percent sure everything's okay." Uh, no other carbon monoxide detectors are going off, so I felt good about that. So I went to sleep. Now, bro, I'm, sleep I, 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 I'm sorry, man. A lot of us feel like she's married to a secret service agent. What service? What service? <laughs> Leaning over, going over in detail what I did, and saying I'm 99.9% .9 sure we can all go back to bed. Oh, God. I wouldn't be surprised if you get a call from a politician going, you want to lead my staff. I mean, <laughs> the only thing you didn't do here is give us some warm milk and a cookie, bro. Wow. I love it. All right. Continue. I know. And I appreciate that you appreciate that. But the sad thing about it is I think Lana went to sleep right after she said, what's going on? I don't think she heard any of it. Right. I think she right. went right back to bed. So. I go back to bed. I get woken up with Lana going, they're here. They're in the driveway. And I'm like, what? You know, I'm coming out of, what's wrong? What's going on? The firemen. Oh, they're my here. God. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Holy bro, shit. Bro, she, she was dreaming. Oh my God! Were you freaking out? <laughs> Shot out of bed, like I thought. I thought she had gotten up, came back to bed, and got got back in bed, and and, and she was like this, or she saw it, or I don't know. You, you know, when you're yeah. coming out of the sleep, you're like, "What's going on?" You know. And I go, "What?" She goes, "Oh no, sorry, I, I was dreaming." Oh fuck. Now, 
I'm sorry, you can't wake me up twice in one night, okay? Because uh-huh. it, it took me about an hour to get back to sleep from the carbon monoxide. Mm-hmm. Now I'm back to sleep, and you wake me up with firemen are in the driveway. I'm up for the, I'm, that's 2.30. Right. I'm up for the right. rest of the thing, right? right? And, and now, now you're at that point where you're laying in bed mad because you know you're going to be tired tomorrow. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> Never had that as oh, a kid. So- that's crazy, man. So today I got a guy coming to make sure I have the appropriate smoke detector and carbon monoxide detectors in the house. And I ordered a mobile one just in case. Now, I'm the type of guy, I'm going to be walking around the house with the mobile one for the next yeah. two and a half weeks, checking to see if there's any monoxide. <laughs> right. right. The silent killer, bro. I hear you, man. I hear you. Just do a, every room you're going, just give it a wand, man. Give it a wand. Tell the family all clear. We can go in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is, so, I, I'm, I'm applauding the, the 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 safety taking care of the family, bro. Hey man, if I don't, if I don't do it, nobody's gonna do it. I mean, you know, Lana's good at what she's good at. I'm good at what I'm good at. But I gotta tell you, I had no assistance going through this thing. You know, I wish I was the type of guy that could just eyeball these situations and go, ah, not nah, a fire alert that it make smoke a lot. You know, like a lot like your like your your father in law would probably be the right. type of guy to walk in and go, ah, nah, that's nothing. That's uh you know, that's a, it's losing battery, I could tell because the the way they put it together like he he wow. he could just analyze it, not even touch the damn thing and figure it out. I'm on YouTube listening to some stranger from Virginia tell me about chirps. Right? I, 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 Bro, I know. And don't you think your wife, my wife, wishes that you were that even more than you wish it? Right? <laughs> right? Let's say, like, I'm with the camper and it says max capacity on the tire, 80 PSI. So I'm in a gas station putting 65 in. Jackie's like, why aren't you putting 80 now? I go, it says max 80. I'm going lower. And she goes, maybe you're supposed to do 80. If you don't do 80, I, you know, you just need a man there to go. No, that means do 80 psi. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Now I'm like you, I'm, I'm doing the Google, right? That's such a women don't take that for granted. If you're dating a man that just yeah that that knows all those little things, man, that's like gold. That's gold, man. No, that's stuff that you know you break down on the side of the road. And it's pitch black, and it's going to be two and a half hours until a triple A gets there. The guy pops the hood open, has a toolbox in the trunk, and fixes the engine, uh, and, and you're on your way. That's the type of guy sometimes wow. I wish I was. I just don't have it in me, bro. Don't have it in me. Um, nah, nah. Well, listen, I, under the circumstances... I think he did a hell of a job. It's amazing how these women can sleep through what they can sleep through. Man. I know. I, I Listen, man, you tell me something's wrong in the house. I'm not going back to bed. But the reason I think we went to bed early last night is we went out for the first time to a restaurant during this pandemic for our anniversary yesterday. Oh, right? congratulations. I saw a post. Seven years. Yeah, I saw the wedding. Years. Fantastic. Grab my water. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm here. So... I went to a Malibu, a place called Nobu. Uh, uh-huh. It's a famous sushi place. Uh, they're yeah. all over the country. Yeah. So right on the water. Beautiful, right? Yeah, reservation, outside seating. That's all they're doing. So I go in at a reservation at 2.30. I had my manager make the reservation. Place is kind of hard to get into. And sometimes it's just better for a third party to make the reservation for you just because, you know, you know, I kind of use my, I don't even want to call it fame, but I'm hoping they recognize the name. Maybe I get bumped up in the reservation queue, right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you subtle about it though. I respect that. I'm not going to call, hey, my name's Sebastian Maniscal. I'm not going to do that. Right. I'd like, I, I do it, hey, Sebastian Maniscal would like to come in. And if they if they go, who, I don't hear it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh. 
No, they, they give me the res. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst when you say I'm Smash Mouth guy. Who? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> I'll call back. <laughs> you call back and, and just keep calling until the person answering's a fan. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you throw the bus boy on that? He might know me, right? So, so I get the reservation and I go in and they say that the table is paying out, it should be ready shortly. So I go back out, we're sitting outside. Now I noticed something. When people go into a restaurant and and, and they have a they have an air of confidence when they have a reservation. You could just tell people who are coming for their 230, their 215, their two you could tell. And then you could tell a person that's just like, you know, kind of like trepidatious about walking in because eh, do they got a table you can <laughs> see it in their body movement <sighs> so this guy came into the restaurant with his family it was uh is him middle eastern guy middle eastern family i say that because just so the the, the people get a uh Kind of a, a you know i paint a picture this hey, is not a, the, yeah just painting a picture paint a picture uh they got a baby with them baby's about one years old and they walk in chest out, chest out, right? And they get sent back out because their table's not ready. And you could just see that it's just the, how people get deflated when they come back out of the restaurant <laughs> and they got to wait in the lobby to get their table, right? <laughs> yep. All right, Alana and I are sitting there and we get called in. It's about a 10-minute wait. We get called back in. We go to our table. Yeah. Now... I sit down, and this is the first time I've been out s since March, right? And I love to scan the room, see what's going on, see what's see what the deal is. We're in a pandemic. I'm looking at the guy's mask. They got a mask, and then they got a shield over the mask. Oh, this is the wait God. staff, right? Wow. Wow. So, guy comes to pour the water at the table. He's got a mask that no one else has. Right? Every, everybody's got like a welding type mask. You know the one that that uh, sits like on your forehead comes down, like dark, like uh, Boba Fett, right? right. From okay. Star Wars. Yeah, I've seen him. All right. I, I got to put the microphone down for uh -huh. for what to to show you this guy's mask. All right. This guy's mask started started here, right? In in like right. Below your Adam's apple. That little hole where our neck meets our chest. Yeah, right here. Yeah. And, bro, it came up like this. It came up like an upside-down V flaring out at the ears? Yeah. It, it And it was big, bro. This thing was yeah. big. Now, right. nobody else has this thing. This guy's walking around the restaurant with such confidence. Like, look. So I'm going. I'm going to line. I go. Now, this guy's mask is different than anybody else. I'm wondering, does the restaurant go, okay, guys, here's the issued masks. This is what you could wear. Pick yours out. Or do you think they tell the employees, just go get a shield mask and bring it into work no matter what you get? Or did this guy have the corona and they told them, hey, you want to come back into work? You got to wear the up. You got to wear the V. That's that's six feet across. You got to you got to wear a double wide guy. Yeah. You know, this is only going through your head. I don't know. It's an interesting question. I feel like they're letting you be a little creative with your mask. Uh, I don't know. But then another guy came to the table to deliver the food. And this is for the wait staff out there because I've been in your shoes, obviously not during a pandemic, but I put myself in the waiter's shoes or the food runner's shoes at this point. And, and again, I notice everything. Well, Lana don't know. I mean, literally, the guy could come to the, to the table and his hair could be on fire. She wouldn't even know, right? <laughs> well, apparently guy, no, no one would know what the fucking mask he's wearing, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy, the guy drops the food, walks away. I go, you see that? She goes, no, what, 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 what? I go, listen, I'm sorry. You got to clean your mask 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> After every shift, this guy had <laughs> this guy had this guy had spicy tuna roll on it from last night. Right? Like, <laughs> it's like if it was your if it was your windshield, you'd be doing that turn, pumping the fluid onto him for a little. Oh God. <laughs> Oh shit! I'm sorry. It was great. It was a great experience, but I cannot relax at a restaurant during a pandemic with everybody walking around right? like they're, they're like it's Star Wars. I, I, would you would? Is it still enjoyable to be out to you? I mean, I've done it too, and even where I went, you know, they didn't have to. They just wore regular masks. But just having to be so far away from other people, even even though me and you complain about strangers for seven years, we complain about them. I still want them two, three feet to my left and right, right? I need to, <laughs> I need them around me. I, so it's all very well. It's I guess you know you take what you can get, right? Yeah, listen, it, it was fun. We had a blast. I'm so glad we went because it really broke up the monotony of the week, and it it was fun. But then on the other hand. You know, I'm looking around, and I got to tell you this: for these, this is this is a, a tip that's going to go out to the people that go to the restaurants. If you're going to wear a mask in the restaurant, you gotta leave it on until you get to your destination. You can't walk into the restaurant with the mask and halfway to your table take it out because now. What happened was they're talking through the restaurant, no mask, as they're going to the table. You got to keep the damn thing on until you sit down, right? Yeah, absolutely. What do they think? It's only outside? Once you get inside, <laughs> it's like you're shaking off the cold? Come on. I'm, you know? You're supposed to wear it. I, I got up to take a leak at a restaurant recently with my family, and I forgot to have it on, man. That waitress popped right out from behind the serving bar. Sorry, sir, you need a mask. I'm um, like, oh, I'm sorry. I just forgot. But, yeah, absolutely, bro. You do not leave your table without masking up. So, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of little nuances that I've noticed out to dinner. And another thing that has nothing to do with the pandemic. And, and Lana and I used to go out to eat all the time before we had kids. And, obviously, now it's not, not as much. It's not as yeah. frequent. Yeah, but I'm noticing now yeah. that everybody... At, and you're not going to notice this as much as uh, in Fredonia than in Los Angeles. Literally, everybody has a phone in their hand. And to the point where they're eating sushi with one hand, and they got the phone in the other hand. They, they're not even putting it down. There was a couple that came in, and I honed in on this couple. They didn't talk the whole time. They were on their phones. The only time they spoke to one another is to take a selfie when the food came. Oh, my God. It's sad, bro. It's, it is. It's sad. These phones, it's, it's pathetic. It, it's it's terrible. So we did that. We came home. We had the carbon monoxide, and, and here I am. I, I got to shut up, bro. What, what's been going on? Wow. An adventure, bro. Crazy. Uh, I, I put I, – I, listen – I had to put something together. You know how, like, uh, recently you did the uh, things you can get at Amazon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so, something came up on the couch the other day with Jackie. And I, I really, as a dad with a daughter, I really wanted to go over this with you real quick. So, yeah, long yeah. story short, we're on the couch. And we're, we're talking about friends growing up and stuff. And Jackie starts talking about a friend who went to college. And long story short, she goes, yeah, she was dating this star diver. The guy, uh, the guy. I go, what? What do you mean star? She goes, the guy. He was the star of the college diving team. So I go, <laughs> you know, for whatever that's worth, right? And she goes, guy, diving's like a big deal in college. It was Division One. He was the star of the diving team, right? Now, it got me thinking, right? Like, if your daughter's older and she comes home and she's talking about some guy she's dating and she... And the guy plays a sport, and he's great at the sport. I get it, soccer, baseball, basketball, wrestling, golf, tennis. I get it. I get all those. We'd all be like, wow, that's great. But then you, then you start getting those fringe sports. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where, like, for example, diving falls. Out, like, like, is that... Does that make you as a dad more interested or less interested? Like, uh, and daddy's a, he's the best diver at the college. He's a star. 
I, like that would make me tell my daughter to pump the brakes. All right, what the fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I I went online and I put a li- I I made sure these were all sports that I know of in college. True, Division One they play these. You're a dad. Your daughter comes home, starts telling you about a, a boyfriend, all hopped up. I, I, I'm not going either way. I'm going to tell you the sport. You tell me how you think you'd feel about it. It's good to know now instead of getting, you know, hit with it out of nowhere, right? <laughs> Serafina comes home. She's going to USC, bro, one of the best colleges, right? Southern Cal. She's dating, here we go, the star water polo player. <laughs> It, water polo, star of the team, team captain, water polo. What you think? How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a moment. I need a moment alone to just fucking take that in. What? <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, my brain's going to a lot of places with this, okay? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, I want to know how you get into water polo. First of all, I want to know if there's scholarships. Of course. And and let, let me preface. Young guy playing water polo on a scholarship. Probably fantastic young man, right? Great thing. It's a wonderful accomplishment. But, but you know, don't don't throw it out there as the, you know, and this is the, the reason why you should like him the most, Dad. Yeah, it's still water polo. Polo, all right. Okay, so There's so a you're fucking, saying listen, captain of a Marco Polo team too? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing more. I'm losing audience, bro. I got to cut this bit. I got to cut this bit. Anyone no, no, who's no. Listen, water listen. polo play is not even a fan of the show anymore. <laughs> no, listen. You're just saying you can't lead with the fact that he's a water polo player, and 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 that's like his his big credit. You know, you 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 gotta you gotta have something else going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, uh, that doesn't, you know. Let's say he's not such a great guy to you all the time. If you're like, yeah, but Daddy is the star of the water polo team. You know, like, like I, I don't know how to put it. You know, it ain't put it to you this way. He ain't studying to be a surgeon. You come home, you tell me, hey, Dad, he's a doctor. He's gonna be a brain surgeon. Wow. Yeah. Dad, he's uh, the captain of the water polo team. I'm sorry. I think that's a. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Huh? But do, do you think he's going to take water polo into the next chapter of his life? Like when he graduates college from USC, do you think he's looking for a professional water polo team to get on? And and if so, can you make a living playing professional water polo? Bro, that's that's the beauty of Pete and Sebastian show. We do the extra work because that's... <laughs> The second part of what I did is I went online to see where you where you can go with water polo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a dude named Tony Acevedo out of Stanford, the best water polo player in the whole world, bro. He won the Olympics for Stanford. I mean, I won the championship for Stanford. There's a water polo league, professional league in Italy. Let me see if I know where in it. Bessola Cremona in Bessola Cremona, and they just signed them. Tony plays in Italy for 275k a year. All right, my my daughter comes home, says I'm moving to Italy. My husband's gonna play for the Rome water polo team, making 275. I'm like, all right, all right. I apologize. What you take, bro? Bro, I I think uh, I think that's fantastic. I, I think that's a nice little living. You're going to be living in Italy. He's making close to 300k a year, which is a it's a great salary. But he's the uh, but he's the Michael Jordan of water polo, bro. I mean, <laughs> like you know, the fucking guys on the bench are making like you know 5k and food. Hey. <laughs> There's got to be some branding opportunities that go along with that, you know. He could be uh, modeling swim caps. No, you're right. You're right. No, there is endorsements. If you, as that's what I'm saying. Your daughter's saying the this guy's the best. She's dating the best. All right. I'll throw another one at you. Throw another one at yeah. you. Daughter comes home and here we'll do this one next. She's dating the star of the men's volleyball team. This guy's one of the best volleyball players in the world. Now, that's fascinating. That's great. It's great, right? Yeah. But, like, I just don't, don't, don't like, I guess, don't brag. Ah, this is a <laughs> bitch. 
It's fucked up. I'm losing. <laughs> Anyone who plays these sports is just dropping like flies on me. <laughs> well, you're, you're saying that these sports are not equivalent to the star basketball player, the star football player, the star hockey player, baseball, whatever. The four major sports you feel are braggable opportunities. But as soon as you fall out of the four majors and you start going volleyball so-and-so, yeah. that that you can't hang your head on that. Now, yeah, uh, that's that's it. That's it. If you're telling me he's putting all of his eggs in volleyball, he's putting all his eggs in water polo, that's what I'm trying to say. That's my concern. Where are we going with these? Okay, let's, let's say uh, water polo, volleyball materialize into a gold medal for the Olympics. I mean, that's something to be said. No, I mean, they, they, your life they is set. Go. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Okay, but I'm curious to know, professional volleyball player, what, what where do they go with that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, there is a league in Italy again. It seems to be uh, this this team in Italy just won the championship, but uh, the. Average volleyball. What do you want to know first? The best pl- volleyball player in the whole world, what he makes? Give me, uh, yeah, give me the top. Forgot his name, but he makes $187,000 a year. I believe he's from Tokyo, Japan. The average volleyball player is bringing in 44 k Okay, so you would have to you would have to think. Listen, I'm making 187 thousand. The difference in this and professional, like the four major sports, is if you're the best at whatever position you're at, generally speaking, you're going to get a multi million dollar contract, play for a set amount of years, whether it be three, seven, ten years, and hopefully you manage your money right, where you're kind of set for the Losing rest you. of your life. The volleyball and the water polo guy, they do have a set amount of years they could play. Now, if a, a volleyball player plays for 10 years at $187,000, it's not like he's going to you know, hang his hat on that the rest of his life. This guy's got to jump into another career. Uh, yeah, so, but, yeah. So the problem with sports is that you have a limited amount of time to make a maximum amount of money. <laughs> And if you don't do that, and you don't have a backup plan, uh, I think that, I think you're in trouble. That I just don't want my daughter to come home telling me, okay, she's dating number three, a professional curler. All right, the ice guys, <laughs> only because right, they're pulling in forty k a year, professional curler, and that's fine. But is this guy going to want to curl for the next 15 years and it's going to slow down his career as, let's say, an architect? He's, he's, <laughs> he, he can't be the architect he could have been because he's curling on weekends. That's Now you're making clear my concerns with these, these fringe sports. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Here, I'm going to flip it around, though. All I'm right. I'm going to flip it around. You know, Jackie comes home with you, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> guy trying to be a comedian, right? Now... That to a parent, I know to me, if my if my daughter comes home with a comedian kicking around in clubs making fifteen dollars an hour, it's hard to swallow too, no? <laughs> that's yeah, that's oh boy. Dad, he's really funny. Oh god, oh god, I probably wouldn't think he is funny. Holy shit. I apologize to all water polo players. <laughs> <laughs> All volleyball players, not the curlers, not the curlers, <laughs> not the curlers. <laughs> but I had this, I had this happen when Lana was dating me. Early on, her grandfather was like, and Lana told me this after he had passed away. He's like, "What the fuck are you doing with this guy for? Oh. Where's he going with this comedy? You know, this is at the point where I was like, uh-huh. you know, playing, you know, comedy clubs or, or what have you." And he was very against me doing comedy and his granddaughter dating a guy who was in the entertainment business. Wow. So yeah. I I you know, I I just and, and, and this is really gonna make you feel bad. <laughs> I just want Serafina to be happy, whether the guy's a curler, whether the guy's a garbage man, whether the guy is the number one quarterback that's gonna be drafted. 
in the NFL. If she's happy, I'm happy. Oh, you say that now, but what if he's a figure skater? <laughs> right? By the way, when I went online and did all these, and when I got the professional figure skater, you know, they usually have leagues and stuff. They say in figure skating, you do it to, you know, compete. Basically, the Olympics is the ultimate goal. But beyond the Olympics, they said most professional skaters make their living. You ready for this? Disney on ice. Disney on ice. So, you know, you could say what you want about the other ones, bro, but she comes home with a guy named Steven who's going to be playing Sven in uh, fucking <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> I don't care how happy she is. That shit is coming through a screeching hall. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, I'm with you, bro. <laughs> oh, God. That's uh, funny. Oh, man. Funny. So other than that, uh, I just want to say you got to see the Sinatra doc. I know you haven't seen it. The one I was talking about on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're going to get around to seeing it, but I, I, I got to bring one thing up that, like, you know, this guy, as you probably know, had, his career had these ebbs and flows, you know? But then yeah. when he was on top at the end, and then it kind of, like, you know, rock came and really hit, and then he was kind of done, you know what I mean? Like, they just weren't playing this kind of music anymore. Doing yeah. different things to try and stay popular. Do you know about this? I, I, I mean, I can't believe Frankie didn't have the footage burned. The five, the five dimensions, right? You know, the band, the, five, the, the group, the five dimensions? Yeah. Fifth, yeah, right? So they're all in green suits, and doing a show, and the and the lead singer of the band goes, ladies and gentlemen, meet the sixth dimension. And Sinatra comes out in a green suit with green frills, and he tries to, you know, sing with the dimensions, but just not his kind of music, you know. And it's just, it just looks like he's embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. <laughs> Have you ever been embarrassed for somebody who's not even alive anymore, bro? <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, I'm, su I'm surprised with his power like you said he didn't have that destroyed and and locked away somewhere like yeah it never happened yeah i know it was it was really something and then uh in closing um so i wanted to ask you right the, the, this past saturday jackie and i got invited to a surprise party of a guy i i, I really like this guy and it's going to be at 3 o'clock, at a pavilion overlooking Lake Erie, there's going to be a band. It's a nice setup, you know. There's a bathroom right there, too. It's all going to be good. We're going to just do a bop-in for a little while. And my Jackie's mom had Sadie, so we had the night to ourselves. We're just going to go say hi. So about I'd say about 3 o'clock, we get in the car. Before we go straight there, we go, let's just drive around a little bit, and then we'll, we'll head over. We stop at a red light. Oh, and this is, by the way, the way he's getting to the surprise party, apparently, is they're going to take him on a bike ride, and then because he likes the bike, and then bring him into the pavilion. And when he gets there, there's going to be the sign, and, he, and everyone's going to go surprise, and he's going to realize it's a surprise party for him. All right? Yeah. Now, first of all, when you're invited to a surprise party, do you want to be there for the initial surprise, or do you like to come after all that played itself out? I haven't been to many surprise parties, but I like to be there to see if the person's surprised or not. I like to look at their face to see if they knew, if they generally surprised. So, yeah, I like to be there for the surprise. Okay. Now, I, 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 I didn't want to be there before the surprise because I don't know when, when this guy's, when he's going to get there, and so I figured we'll go after we get to a red light. He comes biking right past us. And he's like, hey, guys. And we're like, hey, what's up, bro? Good to see you. So we're like, all right, well, let's not go yet. We got to wait a little longer. Bro, five minutes later, we're at another red light. He goes, we keep running into each other. Right? So then we're like, all right, we got to let a good 15 minutes go by. We go, we get a cup of coffee. 15 minutes later, we're now about a mile and a half from where we last saw him. Just about to go into the park. And here he comes biking by again. And he goes, he looks at my windshield. He goes, are you following me? Right? And it's like, Jesus. 
So we're like, what is this guy going to get to his own goddamn party, right? <laughs> <laughs> so finally, about a half hour later, we get over there, and then I'm, I'm talking to him, you know, and I guess he, he he's a real emotional, he's a good dude, man, but he, he got tearied up. Uh, he got uh, really surprised, and he loved it. And I go to him, yeah, but... All right, now it's 3.30 on a Saturday. I go, did you have plans tonight? Were you maybe going to watch a movie? Now you're at a party. You got your bike. I know you like to smoke weed like me. You don't even have any weed on you. Is this what you want to be wearing? Like, like, there's so many variables, bro. I would never want someone to throw me a surprise party, right? Can, at, my, at your age, could you just drop everything? Like, uh, just my hair alone. What the fuck? I got to go do my hair. I got no goods on me, but I'm not even ready for the morning. Now I'm going to be hung over. I'm not ready for that shit. Nah, I don't want it. Have I, you ever? I'm with you. I'm with you, bro. I I need to know. Because I, like you said, the guy could have had some plans. I mean, I'm surprised a lot of people go into a surprise party and go, oh, this is great, but I got dinner in two hours. Yeah, right. Like, like if, if you went right out of this room after this show. And, and, you know, say it's like three weeks from your birthday and they wanted to throw you off. And you just go upstairs and all, Corona aside, all these people you know are up there going, surprise, aren't you like, ah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in that mode, man. I'm not, I'm not, I got to wrap my head around that shit. No way. Would you, would you want your wife to tell you if your family was throwing you a surprise birthday party and... Would you want your wife to be like, listen, I'm going to throw in your party, just act surprised, but I know that you'd really want to know because I know you'd want to be ready for it. No, I, I, I want to be surprised. If they're going to go through the trouble to do it, don't don't tell me that uh, it's coming. I, I need to be surprised. Right. I, I would feel bad. All right. Have you ever had one thrown for you in any capacity? Yeah, I was. Uh, I think I was 16. My, my sweet 16, they had a surprise party. And I wish I would have known because my mom invited like all these, like the neighborhood guys that I, I hung out with that, you know, they were on the kind of perimeter that generally maybe don't come to the house. It was sad, bro. I, I, it was like a surprise. And uh, they found out no alcohol was going to be served. And within a half an hour, it was four people at the party. <laughs> yeah, well, at least they did respect your mom and dad. They did a bopping. They did a bopping. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh shit. shit. Well, good hanging again, good bro. Good hanging, man. Good stuff. Uh, again, we are, we are climbing the charts. I think we're on... 25 we got up to 16 i know uh i know wow. a lot of people don't talk about their their rankings in the itunes but uh this has been an ongoing thing the last seven eight years with pete and i so we just gotta thank everybody for listening to the pete and sebastian show we're having a ball doing it Definitely. um we're, we're actually getting each other through the pandemic by doing this show and i hope uh you guys get a little laugh and chuckle uh for an hour out of your day so just want to thank everybody for listening and we will see you guys next week on the pete and sebastian show by the way a little side note to the listeners sorry i forgot to add this <clears throat> Ten days in a row, we all remember, came home from vacation, ten craps lined up. On the 11th day, I forgot to tell everybody, I did a stakeout. Got up at 4.45 a.m., waited till 6.30 in the morning, nothing. And every day since, nothing. Now, you cannot tell me that this wasn't targeted and calculated and whoever did it got me and they got away i got no cameras they knew exactly when i was gone they hit me 10 days in a row it was not raccoon shit and i am not happy man but i'm psyched that we're climbing as you people say uh in the ratings baby we are going down love it